on the Gainbridge Ball State Cardinals Sports Network. From Learfield, welcome to the Varsity House Bird Feed on the Ball State Gainbridge Network. Here is your host, Joel Godet. All right, welcome into the show, everybody. This is the Bird Feed Live presented by Varsity House on the ISC Sports Network, also streaming on YouTube and the Chirpcast podcast feed. We are live at the L.A. Pittenger Student Center. Joel Godet, Bryce Cosby, and Mike New joining us presently. Cardinals coming off of a loss at Northern Illinois this past week. They finish out the season at home this year. Ball State will have Central Michigan on Wednesday night, and then they will have Buffalo on Tuesday night. So a couple of trips to Schumann Stadium, 888-BSU-TICKET, or head to BallStateSports.com to join us in person as well. You know, it's kind of weird, Mike, and this is like the, the shifting of the Overton window of expectations because I feel like I'm, I'm sitting here like on my way to the morgue when there is still so much left in front of you guys, but it's like the the goal had shifted so much and the expectation in this program had shifted so much in a very short time, which is really a credit to you guys, that it's like now you're sitting here and it's like, oh, well, we got a chance to go to the Bahamas, but that's not what the ultimate goal was. How has the realization been and the refocusing been over the last week to say, hey, we still have a ton left to play for, and, and, and a lot of what we wanted is still in front of us. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing I can tell you is we just have to regroup. There's nothing we can do uh, about looking in the past or the rearview mirror. we got a lot of uh, football left to be played. we got a lot left that we can accomplish. That's just the way the game of football is played, and, uh, you know, we can't dwell on anything that's already happened. Uh, we just had to, you know, I'm proud of the guys, the way they've regrouped this week, the way they've come back out to the practice field, knowing that we're on to the next one. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent, we're on to the next one. And uh, you have to do that. You have to make sure that you uh, uh, regain your focus and, and uh, all your effort, all your energy, uh, all your preparation. And, uh, you know, the process starts right right over again because the game is not going to slide. We're going to play on Wednesday night, the next Wednesday night. And uh, that's what we've done this week. And uh, the guys have done a great job. Uh, you know, we've practiced two days, uh, Saturday, Sunday. Today was a walkthrough. We'll have Fast Friday on a Tuesday, uh, if you will, tomorrow. But I've been proud of where the guys have been at. And, uh, you know, we're, we're on a mission. we got to get – We're the only focus and the only goal here is to win on Wednesday night. Bryce, what has that been like from a player's perspective of uh, regrouping after Wednesday? Uh, kind of like Coach New stated, you know. Uh, I've said it on here before. You know, college has, has really taught me how to – uh, just move on from things, good or bad, um, on the field, off the field. You know, it just teaches you that, that uh, you know, mindset of just always on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Like I said, that's that's good or bad. Um, you know, obviously the, the, the past game was, was one we definitely wanted. Uh, it was a loss that definitely hurt. But at the, at the same token, you know, there's like you said, there's still things to play for. And uh, that's not always been the case, you know, since I've been here. You know, there was times at this point, early on in my career where, you know, we knew a bowl game and a conference championship were both out of the picture. And, uh, you know, the coaches have been preaching that, you know, a real bowl game experience, um, contrary to what we what we dealt with last year with COVID, is something that, uh, you know, this team is deserving of. And so uh, it's something that, like you said, we still have something to fight for. And it's, uh, you know, it's a great, the bowl games are a great experience. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's something that you have to move on from. Um, you know, if we were winning, I'd sit here and be telling you the same exact thing. And so if we would have won that game. So, uh, you know, good or bad, you know, I'm always on to the next. And uh, like I said, you know, it's kind of just a 24-hour rule. You, you, you look at it, you learn from it, and uh, you, move, you move past it. Mike, I, uh, I feel like I, I apologize in hindsight and, uh, and in advance of uh, every time we, we stick a microphone in your face coming off of the field, especially in a situation like that. Um, but the thing I turned to Nick Traub and said on Wednesday on the radio after you finished talking to Jack, I said, like, the, the incredible human moment that just happened in those five seconds where Jack McMullen looked at you and said, Mike, really difficult game. What do you say to the guys in the locker room? And you just said, I don't know and walked off. Um, what do you say, and how do you even think of what you're going to say in a moment like that? Well, you know, certainly when we get together in the locker room after the game, uh, I'm going to address them. And obviously at that moment, just, you know, it was disappointing. It's tough. There's nothing I could say in the locker room post game to take anybody's pain away to change the outcome of the game. But all I could do is try to encourage the guys uh, that we got to, you know, hey, we got to uh, look forward. There's nothing we can do to, to change anything that's happened. We got to look forward. We still got a lot left to play for. We got to finish strong for one another. Uh, we've come this far. 
Uh, we still got two great games to finish this thing off at home. Um, we got to earn a third one. And, uh, you know, again, the guys like Bryce Cosby that have given so much to our program, uh, we're going to give everything that we've got as a team and as a program and as a staff to those guys uh, to finish strong. And, and um, you know, that's been the whole focus this week. Uh, you know, it was a long bus ride back home, I can't lie. Uh, and about, you know, 15 minutes into it, we had a little bit of a uh, like, whoa, did that just happen? This car right in front of us just uh, went across them and hit the inside median right there. And so I'm like, that, that did just take place here. Uh, so a long bus ride home. But once we got back at, at uh, 4:30 in the morning, it was, you know, try to try to catch a little bit of sleep, and then we got to move uh, move full speed ahead onto the next one, and and uh, that's where we're at right now with Central. And again, I'm proud of the guys so far. Uh, we got to finish our week here of preparation with the next, uh, you know, the next uh, tomorrow with with uh, you know what we do on the practice field tomorrow and get ourselves ready to go mentally. Bryce, we sat here last week and we we talked about who are the who are the guys that say things in the locker room, and you at Akron had a pretty fiery halftime uh, production of a speech. Um, what did you say? Like, what do you do as a leader post-game, something like that? Uh, well, you know, me being a leader, I have emotions too. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak based off emotion. You know, sometimes, you know, I was upset after the game like anybody else. So I think it's just about knowing the moment. You know, I understood what guys were going through at that point in time after the game. So it wasn't really appropriate, um, in my opinion, for me to, really say anything you know I'd rather just let people be in tune with their emotions um you know let them deal with the loss however they want to deal with it and uh you know as as time kind of passes and you know we all go to sleep wake up the next day you know that's kind of like when I try to get the temperature of the locker room and just how everybody's feeling and whatnot but um you know I think it's just all about knowing the situation you know um like I said emotions are real they're natural and I can't ever fault anybody for you know, how they feel or react after a game. And so, uh, like I said, I just try to let my teammates deal with that moment the, the, the best way they know possible. Um, obviously not to do anything stupid, but, um, and, and, yeah, just let everybody ponder on it however they feel. And then after the 24-hour rules up, you know, we'll come together, talk about it, um, learn from it, look through the film, uh, make the corrections, and then, you know, as we stated, we're on to the next. But, uh, you know, there wasn't really anything on my part. You know, I leave that to the coaches at the end. If any guy, you know, just looks like they're really, really struggling, that I feel like, okay, I have to say something, then, yeah, I'll, I'll step up. But for the most part, I like I like giving guys their space in situations like that. I want to uh, break down a couple of things. Uh, there were some positive things that happened for you guys. Uh, there were really positive things that happened for you guys. You guys won the turnover battle. Um, and I want to go through a couple of those here, Mike, because uh, – the first one was an interception by Brandon Martin, and we've talked a lot about Bimar. Um, but for him to come back from his knee injury and three weeks later, there he is over the middle of the field picking off Rocky Lombardi, uh, which was a really nice read. Um, and this goes, I guess, for either of you guys. Uh, when you went back and looked at that play, uh, why did it work? What did Bimar see, and, and how did he wind up with the ball in his hands? Uh, I think it was a mixture of a couple things. You know, I think the pocket kind of collapsed on him. Um, you know, he had kind of went through his progression and what he initially wanted kind of wasn't there. And then, um, like you said, you know, sometimes, you know, pressure, it can it can bust pipes. And that's that's basically what it was. It wasn't um, anything crazy or fancy on our part. Um, it was just, you know, the progression that kind of broke down. And, you know, I think he felt the, the pressure kind of closed down on the pocket. Might not even have seen, you know, Brandon uh, right there sitting in the middle of the field. And, um, yeah, I tried to make a throw across the middle of the field and you threw it straight to him and, and Brandon made the play. You know, couldn't be more happy for a guy. Just everything he's had to deal with this year. I know it's been a emotional roller coaster for him, but, um, you know, for him to come back into this game, um, you know, still kind of getting his feet wet in terms of um, how much he's been playing. But for him to, you know, come in this game, I think it's, it's definitely a confidence boost. And, you know, it just makes me happy that uh, he has a play like that on a positive note um, here at the tail end of the season um, in comparison to, you know, how things started for him. So, uh, yeah, I was, I was super excited to see him make that play. It was a huge play for us early and uh, gave us a lot of moment, momentum. Mike, it's really a testament, though, the way Bryce says that, uh, yes, to Brandon for making the play, but also to A.J. Uzadinma, J.T. Wahi to make sure there wasn't anything else open. That's what forces the read there and then obviously the pass rush. Um, a turnover is a one-man stat, but it, it, it's almost, when you look at it in that way, uh, an 11-man play. There's no question, and you preach that a lot. You just talk about everybody doing their job and making sure they do it to the best of their ability, and when you get 11 guys that are that are doing that, then good things happen, and, you know, so, you know just like Bryce said, it was great to see that, you know, he threw it right to Bmar, but at the same time, sometimes the hardest one 
is the one that comes right to you because right. uh, that's the one you're probably not expecting. <laughs> uh, but he delivered, and it was awesome. And uh, you mentioned the turnovers. You know, it was great because, uh, you know, we had two turnovers and really a third one if you look at the block punt. Right. Uh, and to me, early in the game, we just didn't capitalize on some of the opportunities we had. We left some plays. We left some opportunities out there uh, to establish a little bit bigger of a lead earlier in the game. And um, But that's, you know, because – a lot of times, you know, when we talked about it even a week ago, when you win the turnover margin, you just look at the record uh, for MAC teams. And so, uh, you know, when you talk about some of the missed opportunities and we didn't execute at a high enough level on third down, that's the equalizer. Uh, and so, um, you know, it was positive things. It was great. Our guys have been great uh, in terms of the turnover uh, battle and, and continuing to take pride in that. But uh, um, you got to learn from it and we got to move forward. Let's talk about the block punt because I feel like in, in terms of frequency in college football it's one of the harder things to pull off you just don't see them all that often grand scheme of things uh what happened on that play that allowed Hassan Littles to come through and get some hands on that and uh turn it into a safety uh shout out to two people first <laughs> uh I want to give a shout out to our special teams coordinator coach Doherty um you know I don't think he gets a lot of credit um just for our special teams unit as a or special teams units as a whole um coming in you know, it, as he, he's got a difficult job because anybody that comes in from high school, you know, it's super difficult to, to tell a guy who just came from catching like 50 passes, <laughs> double-digit touchdowns, to you're about to run down on kickoff or do this, that, and the third. You probably won't get that many offensive snaps. And, um, you know, finding guys that are willing to buy into that, um, not to mention, you know, special teams, it, it's only one play you know we break it down on one at, at every special teams meeting because you only get one shot um it's not like offense you miss a block second down you know we'll go to the next play that's not the case for special teams and these are game changing plays definitely it's the most yardage involved in every play um there's points guaranteed for field goals you know things of that nature and so the, the, the way he schemes things up week in and week out um you know we've put it on film that we'll rush punts so it's not like people aren't expecting us to come after punts and for us to be able to schematically still put ourselves in position to, to, to get blocks kind of speaks volumes now that we're in week nine, week ten um, to, to, our, to our special teams coordinator on his his ability to just, you know, scheme it up. Because, I mean, we've been close the past couple of weeks. You know, I feel like if you, if you let him tell it, we should have been we should have blocked the punt the past three weeks. You know, it's just we, we, we missed the opportunity. And then, um, you know, Hassan, most, one of the most selfless guys on our team. Um, you know, he, he, he makes plays on every special teams unit. And, um, you know, this one, he, he took a chance. Coach, Coach Doherty always tells us, if you leave your feet, you better block it. And, uh, you know, he left his feet. Uh, he took a, a great angle to the ball. And, um, you know, it's just the small details like that. Uh, I think it was his angle. You know, there wasn't any wasted movement. He came right off the guy's uh, back hip there and, uh, yeah, dove out and made the play for us. And, uh, yeah, luckily we were able to, to get a safety. But, yeah, I think it's it's a mixture of just, you know, guys buying in. You know, Coach Doherty, he, he, he makes it fun. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff that he incorporates into the meetings that, uh, you know, we all buy into. And then it's just, you know, when the, when the play is there to be made, you know, guys making plays. So, Mike, tell me a little bit about Hassan because, as Bryce just put it, it's hard to come in as a freshman from high school and say, all right, I just caught 100 passes and double-digit touchdowns and, now I'm going to go run down and cover, uh, cover kicks. It's an entirely different thing when you're a fifth-year senior and you want to play on offense and you're saying, all right, you're going to go be our special teams guy. And Hassan is your special teams guy. Um, tell me a little bit about his selflessness and uh, his personality and why it is that he thrives in the role that he has. Well, I think his team-first attitude is something that if you rewind the clock and you go all the way back to 2017 when the, a big group of this guys came in, you know, he came in with the same class as Justin and really, for the most part, those guys kind of play the same position offensively, similar in stature, similar in terms of what they bring to the table skill set wise. And um, But, you know, it tells you a lot about him as far as his team at, team first attitude, because, you know, his initial role obviously became on special teams. And every time I, I think every week, I can't remember the last time we had a week after or the day after the game when we had a meeting as a staff and we go through the offense, we go through the defense, we go through the special teams. I can't ever remember a game. The last time Coach Doherty said that, you know, Hassan Littles didn't do his job. I mean, it's been – he's just so steady and consistent, and he's bought in, and he takes pride knowing that, man, that's the way I'm going to make a difference. 
uh, for our team. That's the way I'm going to make a difference for our program. And, and yet every week, you know, he still reps with a great attitude offensively. He still rotates in practice. Obviously, you know, go into every game and you, and you plan to rotate guys and then you get into the flow of the game and sometimes the rotation or sometimes the snaps don't unfold exactly the way that you think. And, um, and so, you know, it's a credit to him because, you know, he, he, he stayed here. It was important to him to be with his guys, to be with a group of guys that he came in with. And then uh, he, is, he is making a difference, and he has made a huge difference uh, for our football team, for our football program. And um, he continues to, like Bryce said, the most selfless guy you know. That's such a great, um, you know, great message, a great example uh, for every young player that comes in here and they see a guy like that. And like, man, you know, obviously, um, you know, and, and that, we work – countless hours on punt pressure uh coach Doherty reps it every day it, it, all week long and then we get to the walkers and we must give guys uh as many looks as it possibly exist on film uh we give them every look they've seen every look uh by the time the game kicks off and uh like Bryce said it's you know I don't miss those uh meetings uh if I if I can help it and certainly the one it always uh, I, I, it's I will never miss that special team meeting when you talk about the last one before the game takes place because it's always good it's always a great message and it's always uh well prepared and well thought out and he's always got a great team message as well so those are the turnovers that uh that did happen I want to talk about the turnover that didn't happen because I swore that Drew Plitt threw an interception with 30 seconds left to go in the first half. And somehow, Jalen McGoy comes down with that ball for a 45-yard reception that puts you in field goal range. Uh, Mike, what did you see in that moment? And uh, what a testament is it to Jalen to not give up on a play that he came down with that ball? Yeah, no question. I mean, everybody knows it was a little bit underthrown. Uh, but for a guy like Jalen to just go compete, he... he he wanted it and uh, he went and got it and there's nothing else that you can say about it it was just sheer determination want to um you know he went back and somewhere between uh when the first contact or when the first ball first went into the defender's hands between there and the ground Jalen made the decision I'm getting it out just like Bryce made the decision the week before I'm gonna I'm gonna get this turnover right. uh and ball game's gonna be over so you credit uh you know credit Jalen in that situation because he just simply went up and made a play and and uh, you know hats off to him because he made the most of uh, his opportunity um, you know when he had it well same mentality he had that double reverse double might have been a triple um, and I, like he's like 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage and I thought he was dead to rights and then he winds up turning the corner and out running guys and he picks up 25 yards positively uh, in those moments I have to imagine like a, a, a survival gear kicks in you're like I'm not getting tackled back here <laughs> Well, obviously we talked, you, you, when you're doing a double reverse like that, first of all, you got to make sure there's no pressure on the play and you got to call it on the right down and distance. That's, that's obviously the least amount of pressure. You're not expecting a pressure. And so, uh, and then obviously if there is some penetration, he's got to make one of the guys miss. And so, you know, it's going to be a D lineman. Uh, he's got to make that guy miss. And with his speed, um, you know, obviously he did that. He, he did a great job. And then once he turned the corner, it was like, oh my, uh, yeah. he took off down that sideline. I was like, you know, utilizing his skill set and uh, it was good to see that from him uh one other guy that had a good day for you on offense and in general he ran back a punt uh almost 30 yards uh justin hall did enough to pass dante love for the all-time all-purpose yards record here at ball state um what's that say mike just about his legacy and what he's meant to this program and that his name now sits atop that chart for for posterity well we all know how special of the of a player he is in terms of skill set but what what to me what's even more impressive and similar to bryce here is their toughness and their availability think about the number of games in which these guys have played and i think last week we talked before the game it's his 53rd start it was uh, like limping bryce. off the field at the well, end and, yeah. and for bryce too but for those guys their toughness and right. their availability and how well they take care of themselves and yes you know yes they play their style of play and it's physical and you know bryce is is physical and he's always in on the action and same with justin you know he's Justin's one of those guys that searches out contact. That's just the way he plays the game. And so that's just a credit to him, man, for, for just as, you know, how hard he's worked at it from the time he arrived. And then he's, his toughness, his availability, and, you know, however you can get the ball in his hands, we got to get the ball in his hands. Mike New, Bryce Cosby joining us. This is the Bird Feed Live presented by Varsity House. Cardinals are home Wednesday night. They'll take on Central Michigan at 7 o'clock inside Schumann Stadium, 888 BSU ticket or ballstatesports.com to join us live. Um, last thing I want to do touching on last Wednesday is the very, I don't know, like the last quarter and a half. And I just look at it from the last couple of games, Mike. Um, time of possession 
last three games in the second half, and, and specifically, you guys have had very good first drives, and then after that, it's like the last quarter and a half of games. Time of possession is 73% for the opponent and 27% for you guys, if the math is right on that. Um, what has happened in that last segment or last third of games that either has stalled out offensively or, or I mean, defensively, the numbers are really good in the second half, but what hasn't clicked that has made you guys vulnerable there? Yeah, you gotta, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's nothing different. You've got to sustain drives and you've got to execute. And we had some opportunities there, and, and it comes down to execution. You, when, you're, when you're going three and out, then you're going to obviously put your defense back out on the field. They're going to be tired because they hadn't had a chance to refresh and kind of get – get their legs back the best they can in a game on the sideline. So it's about execution. And, and uh, certainly you look at some of the opportunities in the second half of those games. Can't be three and out. Can't be four and out. Whatever it is, you know, it's, it's got to be a drive where you sustain drive and you put points on the board so it comes down to execution. Bryce, uh, what is playing that much defense in the second half like? Oh, that's fine. You okay. Know, I'll play 100 snaps if need be. Uh, <laughs> I'm never going to blame or – you know, try to use that as a crutch that, you know, we're on the field. Um, when, you, when, you, when you suit up, um, you're suiting up for whatever comes with it. And to me, if that means, you know, having to play however many snaps, then that, that's the case. Because, I mean, there's been games where, you know, we didn't get a lot of snaps. Um, you know, uh, a game like Army, you know, we knew they're going to try to hold the ball, but there's not going to be that many plays around, right. you know. Um, and so we knew we wouldn't get that many opportunities. I feel like Miami, um, we weren't on the field that much either. And so, um, you know, it, it, you, you got to take the, the – the, you just got to roll with the punches in terms of, you know, whatever the flow of the game is, you got to go with the ebbs and the flows. Um, it's our job as, as athletes here to, to, to be in shape. And, uh, you know, if that means being on the field, that, that, then that's what you got to do. Um, I think it's all a mentality, and uh, it's all about execution. You know, uh, we, we, we do all the off-season training, things of that nature, to prepare you for moments where, you know, you're, when you're supposed to be quote-unquote tired, that you can still focus. Um, and lock in and do your job to the best of your ability. So, you know, we're never going to use use anything like that as a crutch or, you know, point blank, you know, we didn't execute. Simple as that. Um, and, and, yeah, we got to do better, and, and we will do better this week. And that's let's, all that matters. Let's talk about this week. Central Michigan comes into town. Uh, they're a team that still has a, a slight outside chance at uh, catching Northern, so they've got a ton to play for, which makes it fun for you guys because you can be a spoiler uh, to their hopes and dreams a little bit. Uh, we talked a lot about special teams. We talked a lot about the punt block that you guys had. Um, a couple of weeks ago, they ran back two punts. Khalil Newton's one of the more dynamic return men in this conference, and he did it in a span of five minutes. He had two punt return touchdowns. Uh, what is it about their punt return unit, and I guess their kick return unit as well, uh, that is so dynamic, and how do you game plan for that? Um, well, you know, it starts with having a guy back there who can, you know, make, make big plays, and, you know, he certainly has that capability. Um, and then, you know, from a schematic standpoint, you know, it's, it's, it's things that they're doing and it's things that other people aren't doing. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, it's all about executing on both ends. You know, you got to obviously try to try to there, there's ways you, you go about um, covering a punt. You know, there, there, you got to keep leverage. You got to make sure the ball always stays inside and in front of you. Um, and then when it, when it comes to time to make the play and make the tackle, you got to make the tackle. And so, uh, you know, I think it's a. Uh, a couple things that go into it, but for their sake, you know, they have a great returner back there who's capable of making big plays in the return game and on offense. And so I feel like, you know, like we said with Justin a couple weeks ago, anytime you got a guy that can, you know, make people miss and then he's got the long speed to, 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 to break it loose and, and, and finish the play, um, you know, it always presents an issue. But, um, you know, for us, I, I feel like it's, it's more about what we do in terms of, um, you know, focusing on our job and doing whatever is necessary to, you know, keep him inside and in front of us at all times and, and rally into the ball to get him down. That's all that matters. Mike, why is Khalil Pimpleton good? Well, obviously his skill set somewhat similar to a guy like Justin Hall. He has the ability to make the first guy missed. He's quick. He's explosive. He can stop and start. Uh, obviously he does a good, good job of tracking the ball in the air. Uh, so you got to give him credit for that, you know, and he's one of their – he's certainly the leading receiver for him too. Uh, over on the offensive side of the ball. But just as Bryce said, you know, he's heard this saying uh, ever since he showed up here, the drills are the plays. And so every, you know, the, as much emphasis and as much time as we invest uh, special teams, both in the meeting room and on the practice field, uh, our guys know it's a mindset, man. And obviously everybody's got a job to do. Everybody's got, uh, you know, again, we, we rep, we walk through, uh, you know, all of our punt, 
coverage looks many different times. We know uh, how dangerous of a guy he is. Coach Doherty always does a great job putting a plan together, but it's really about coverage. And you talk about a guy like Hassan Littles, when you have a guy like Hassan Littles that's running down as a gunner, uh, that's the number one way uh, for us to do a great job. And, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's a great challenge, but we'll be ready for it. Uh, other things that they do offensively, one thing that jumped out to me, we've talked about trick plays a lot. Uh, they've got, I think, four guys that are not a quarterback who have thrown a pass this year. A couple of different running backs in consecutive weeks have done it. Um, interesting wrinkles that you're ready or aware of um, heading into this one? Uh, he, as you stated, you, you've got to be aware. Uh, we know 88, he played quarterback in high school. Um, I think 11 played some quarterback in high school. And so um, you got to be conscious of that on the field. Uh, you got to know where people like running trick plays at. Uh, you know, usually around the alumni zone, we call it, from about the 40 to the 40, uh, the midfield mark. Why is and that then, the alumni zone? Uh, uh, from my understanding, that's where the, usually where the alumni sit. Or, <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a gesture uh, that people, you know, they'll do a trick play for the alumni when they get to, to that area of the field. So I like that. A, okay. That's right. Yeah. And get the alumni excited. Yeah. There you go. And so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the alumni zone and then, you know, pretty like high red zone areas where, you know, we're expecting – uh, some of those trick plays. So part of it is, is where to expect it, um, who, who they like to get involved for it. Um, and then, yeah, it, it all goes back to doing your job. Um, you know, if you don't do your job, none of that, none of the tendencies and none of that matters. So uh, just staying disciplined and, um, you know, knowing what to expect and, and just being in tune with what they put on film. Mike, I don't know how much, how far back you go film-wise, how many games you guys break down, but Daniel Richardson came in against Florida International, I think in week three or four really jump-started them offensively. Uh, what does he do for them as a quarterback um, that has made them better on the back half of the season? He locates the ball well, uh, and obviously, you know, he does a good job. He's, he's you know, a little bit shorter in stature, very similar to a guy like John Paddock that way, but, uh, you know, he does a good job of getting the ball in the hands of the playmakers. He makes good decisions. Uh, obviously, they do a good job of spreading the ball out. They take advantage of all the weapons that they have offensively because not only the three receivers, you know, Lou Nichols is, is you know, the top running back right now in the league in terms of rushing yards and all that, and so they do a good job, uh, you know, spreading the ball around that way, and uh, they're going to give you some different looks. They're going to give you some different formations. And, um, you know, just like Bryce said, when you're talking about a guy like Khalil Pimpleton, you know, obviously familiar with him during the recruiting process before he went to Virginia Tech. And then, you know, after being at Virginia Tech, he transferred uh, back to Central Michigan. So very familiar with him and, and what his film looked like when he was in high school as well. So uh, they just do a good job, you know, and, and uh, you know, we saw Daniel Richardson on film a year ago before we played him. He didn't play in our game, uh, but we were able to see him on film and certainly familiar with him, and, and he's really done a good job for a young quarterback. Uh, were you guys in on Khalil Pimpleton coming out of high school? Oh, I mean, obviously you recruit good players. He's a good <laughs> player. Uh, so we were trying. Obviously he's from that area, and uh, you know, so uh, we felt, uh, you know, again, the big question mark was, you know, a lot of teams when he was in high school, are you recruiting him as a quarterback or are you recruiting him as an athlete? And so, uh, you know, those are conversations that took place. And, you know, back then certainly it was important for him, um, you know, to try to get an opportunity there at quarterback. But great player, man, and um, obviously had a great career so far. I feel like it's like criminal malpractice that I ask you this many questions about their offense and did not mention Lou Nichols. Uh, he is third in the country in carries. He's among the nation's leaders in yards as well. Uh, why is he so dynamic, and, and what about him lends to him being able to be that kind of a workhorse? I think he's, you know, he, he's a very patient runner. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not a, a secret that, you know, us as defenders, we can get antsy at times. You know, you want to you wanna get the ball carrier down so bad, you want to you wanna make a play, and he, uh, he uses that aggression um, against people sometimes. You know, there's, there's plays where he'll see him bottled up in the backfield and cut and find the smallest crease. Um, you know, right there in the A-gap and, you know, just, you know, bust a long run. So I, I think his, his, uh, his, his patience, uh, he's got good balance. He's a, he's a physical runner in the sense that, you know, he can break tackles if you don't bring your feet and you don't wrap up. Um, yeah, and then he, he, the ability to finish runs, you know, he, when he breaks, breaks free, um, you know, being able to finish the job. And so, um, you know, his physicality is what, you know, I feel like has allowed him to take on that workload. And then his patience and ability to make people miss in open space is what's, you know, been the correlation to the yards and the touchdown so um, like any week it's about getting to the ball um, wrapping up you know we can't can't miss tackles um, things of that nature but you know definitely a, a great back in my opinion probably one of the, the best we've seen thus far and so uh, you know it's a great challenge for us as a defense 
Uh, you guys happy just to be home? I feel like you've been on the road for a month and a half. Is it I good am. to be at Schumann Stadium again? I am. I'm yes. <laughs> yes. It's yeah, exciting yeah. to be back home here for the final two and, you know, uh, you know, excited about Wednesday night. I really am. I know, you know, couldn't wait. You know, once we move forward and full speed ahead, I've been proud of the guys, the way we've attacked the practice field, the energy, the effort, the enthusiasm. Uh, I can't lie. There was a couple days that we took the practice field. Very thankful once again for the indoor practice facility because there was <laughs> snow coming down. I looked out my window and I didn't think for one second I wasn't worried about the Schumann Stadium field being covered in snow because we had an option. Uh, and so didn't have to ask Byron to see if he'd get a hold of Josh Paulus and see if there was a way to make our way to the field sports building. That's how I thought uh, Byron just went out there through. and shoveled himself. <laughs> we, 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 whatever it takes. Uh, but sometimes <laughs> on Saturday, nodding. Saturday and Sunday in, in midweek action, uh, those are tough because we practice in the morning and to get it, get it handled real quick is sometimes tough. So we didn't have to drive uh, in our cars with equipment on down to the field <laughs> sports building. Yeah. Um, Bryce, I've, you said that very sheepishly. I feel like, like, are you, 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 like you, you're hyped that it's like does it feel to you that you've been gone forever I just when it comes to matching <laughs> I would just much rather be, be at home <laughs> just because those, those bus rides win or loss 4 a.m. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a fan of getting back home at 4 o'clock in the morning you know it's just I, I'd rather just be at home go through our normal process things of that nature but yeah I'm definitely definitely excited to be back home these last two weeks all right, it'll be 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. The Cards will take on Central Michigan. It is the penultimate game of the season, Central Michigan Wednesday, then Buffalo on Tuesday. Uh, guys, looking forward to it. We will see you Wednesday night at the Shoe. Thank you. Head Thank coach you. Mike New, Bryce Cosby joining us. It's the Bird Feed Live presented by Varsity House here on the ISC Sports Network YouTube and the Chirpcast podcast feed. This was the Varsity House Bird Feed on the Ball State Game Bridge Network.